All right, Periscopers. I came on, so as we're, you know, continuing this series on being gay in Bermuda, real talk, real questions. Um, but allow me to digress, because as I was driving, I just noticed this view of our North Shore in Bermuda. It is an absolutely stunningly amazing day in Bermuda today. I mean, let me just park my car a second. <laughs> let me just park my car a second so that I can step out and show you what I'm talking about. I mean, I am so blessed to live in this country. I mean, the view is just stunning. I mean, look at this view. Let me go through here. This is, this is Bermuda people. I'm currently down at Ducks Puddle, which is on the northern side of the island, closer to St. George's, closer to our airport. I didn't see that question. I'm sorry, you're gonna have to do that again, but I mean, this view is breathtaking. Oh, I can imagine living down here. I live on the other side of the island, but I could just imagine living down here and coming over here and just sitting off on a chair and enjoying this view. See, someone's out there fishing right now. I know, right? Isn't this view fantastic? Oh, it's breathtaking. I feel so blessed. What is your sight like? Oh, my side of Bermuda, um, it's, it's similar. I mean, Bermuda is completely surrounded by water. Um, it's a little rougher on the South Shore side. There is an end in the world, guys. Yes, I realize that's what the title is about. And you're absolutely right. It's nothing wrong with people being um, bisexual or gay. Absolutely not. Um, but in Bermuda, we're getting ready to have a referendum on the subject where the public is going to have to decide. Yeah, there's a lot of people that have a problem with it. All right, so, yeah, let's get back to the topic, right? So I just wanted to share that view with you, but now... What really annoys you? Do share. Mm -hmm. As I get back in my car. Okay. Let's see if I can put my phone up here and give you a view as we drive. When guys say they hate gay people, but they love watching two girls get it on. Ah. Oh. We agree. I just think that is so fraudulent. I totally agree with that. People saying how much they uh, don't like gay people this way and they don't like gay people that way. But when it comes to the sexual side of it, you're absolutely right. They're very vested in that. I mean, they think they think that's everything. And I know a lot of guys who would say, hey, all gay people should die, but put two women in front of them, make it out. They're all into it. In fact, I've had people come up to me and say, hey, you know, uh, can I watch? Oh, I find that annoying. Can you watch what? I'm not making a porn movie. I'm sharing intimacy with my partner, and you want to turn it into porn. Absolutely annoying and disrespectful at that. But today's topic, I want to talk about what happens when a gay person 
goes to the hospital and their partner who they have been with, who they love, who probably knows more about them than anybody in their family, doesn't have any rights because one, in Bermuda, they're not married. And two, they don't have a power of attorney. And so in that moment, when they are, say, rushed to the hospital, and the only person that they're with is their partner, that person's family can now come in and make the decisions. And sometimes those decisions are contrary to what they would have told their partner that they want. So some people say these like, oh, well, they should have wrote it down. They should write down what they want just in case they go to the hospital. Well, why should I have to write it down when you as a heterosexual, because you're married and you have your partner there, doesn't don't have to write anything down, don't have to get a power of attorney. Well, yet I've been with this person six, seven, eight, nine, ten years. I know they love me. I know that they know what I would want. But my family now can come into the picture and they might be homophobic and because they might be homophobic kick that person out and say no we get to make the decisions and end up doing something that could be contrary to what I would have wanted done and that is a real possibility that gay man can't give blood. Um, I would have to do some research on whether or not that actually happens in Bermuda if gay men can't give blood or can't give blood. And that's interesting. Why wouldn't a gay man be able to give blood if he has been properly screened? And are you are you Bermudian? Do you know that to be true in Bermuda? Because I've never heard that myself, that a gay man can't give blood in Bermuda. I would think blood, the giving of blood should be subjected to, subject to a number of conditions. some connection to the hospital I'm going to have to make that inquiry for myself but that I would find that to be very discriminatory if you as a gay man can't give blood just because you're gay I mean how is that not discriminatory what would be the reason or what was the reason that they gave to you as to why you couldn't give blood because if my partner got in an accident and needed blood and we had the same blood type, I would think that I should be able to give my partner blood. Mind you, I'm a female. Yeah, I hear you when you say no man can give blood. But I was wondering what is the reason where you actually told the reason. That's very disturbing. So I'm combining a view or a little tour over reader with my topic today. So, 
as I was saying, that is some of the challenges that gay people face. As long as we prevent them from marrying in this country in Bermuda. Or having civil unions. Yeah, well, Google might give me the answer for the rest of the world, but I'm curious as to whether or not that is actually a fact in Bermuda and Bermuda's hospitals, whether or not a gay person cannot give blood. And that would be problematic too, because what about all the gay people that are in the closet? There are tons of gay men in the closet. So what if they give blood? And does the form ask you if you're gay? Because I would think that you have to fill out this sort of questionnaire before you can give blood. And you're, and, and, and you're telling me that the form would actually ask you, are you gay? Wow. Well, that I would have to see from my own eyes. And that would be certainly a challenge that would be, for me, quite disturbing. If I was a gay man and my partner had the same blood as, as me, but that he couldn't give me blood. Yes, I, I am like you. I, I have a lot of questions around that topic. I will make it my business to see if I can get an answer to some of those questions. And see, this is why I think it's so important for us to have these conversations. Because there's a lot of... Yeah, it is a bumpy word. There is a lot of information out there that... Okay, what's going on here? Sorry. I don't know what's going on here with this person. Okay, but there's a lot of information out there. I'm sorry, there's a lot of questions out there that we have that we should have dialogue about. And I imagine that a heterosexual listening to this conversation is now saying to themselves, if they didn't know, like me, oh, a gay person can't have blood? Oh, now when I go to the hospital, I'm going to have to make sure that blood didn't come from a gay person or a gay man. And unless there are some legitimate reasons surrounding that, again, we're discriminating against people. Because now you have an impression that blood from gay a gay male is tainted. But again, I ask the question, what if that person doesn't declare their sexuality and they're donating blood? So what happens then? I mean, this, that is, is disturbing. Yeah, thanks. I don't know why I lost reception. Hopefully I'm back home. But these are some of the, these are some of the things that I think that we need to have dialogue around and people... People don't realize that these questions affect us. These, the decisions that are made around uh, the decisions that are made around um, sexuality or based on sexuality are not fair and create this uh, fear mongering create this separation which make people start to justify well hey this is why we shouldn't let gay people marry or this is why we shouldn't let gay people have children 
And so we continue to put them in a box. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And for me, as we are moving towards this possibility of a referendum in Bermuda on gay marriage and civil unions, this is why I am committed to opening up myself, making myself vulnerable to, a to answer questions because we need to start having real life dialogue. We need to have this dialogue. And so I'm encouraging my followers to, to follow me, one, or the people that are following me now to follow me, or listening to me now to follow me, and encourage as many uh, of your followers to follow in so that we can have broader dialogue. Because I think there is nothing worse than people making a decision based on a lack of information. And I think the more we talk about it, the greater we're able to share information. Because it is, it is sad. It is very sad for me to think that I could go to the hospital one day and be injured or unable to speak. And the person that knows me the most, knows me intimately, knows my feelings around different things as an adult would be my partner, but they would not be able to make decisions for me because we're not married, because we're not civilly tied. And for people to suggest that, oh, well, in order to avoid that, you can go and, and get a power of attorney now, pay to get a power of attorney, which is gifted to heterosexuals that are married, I think that is grossly unfair. I think it is grossly unfair. Absolutely, things need to change. And things need to change because, one, we're human beings. And we have a right to the same privileges mm -hmm. as anybody else. And because you happen to be heterosexual doesn't mean that you are entitled to privileges. It doesn't mean that. And I had an interesting conversation uh, with my aunt today about, well, gay men, why do you want to get married when marriage is an institution that... Mm -hmm started out of the Bible. And so that's why you shouldn't be able to get married because marriage is an institution that started out of the Bible. And I and my, my response to her was, whilst it may be an institution that started out of the Bible, the reality is atheists marry and they don't even believe in the Bible, but they have the right to marry as long as they're heterosexual. And, and the fact is that whilst the institution started in the Bible, it, it has been brought outside of the Bible and put in the hands of the government. And once it's in the hands of the government, all citizens should be able to benefit from that service because the reality is this. You can get married in any church you want. But until that marriage is registered at the government facility, it is null, is null and void. It is not recognized. But yet, you can get married at the government facility, which is the registrar, and that marriage will be recognized regardless of whether a church recognizes it or not. So you need the government to marry, but you don't need the church to marry. And that's something for us to think about very carefully. Um, Skullslayer, Skullslayer, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing your name right, but could you repeat what you said? I missed it.
That's the only thing about Periscope. It doesn't leave the uh, questions up for a long time for you to get the whole question. So you have to be some type of speed reader. But I think it's important that we recognize that, that we don't need churches to marry. Once the registrar was created, you don't need a church to marry. And so even if the institution of marriage came out of the Bible, the reality is it is outside now. And it is no longer governed by the churches. So why should the churches be depriving people of marrying? When, as I said, atheists get married. Persons that don't necessarily believe in different religious uh, factions get married. So you don't have to be a Bible believer to get married. How many houses does God need? There is churches everywhere. Well, listen, I'm not going to get into the the question of religion and how many houses God needs and stuff like that. I tend to, I try to stay away from the in-depthness of religion. I believe in the freedom of religion and you get to choose what you believe in inside of your organization. What I'm concerned about is how you influence the civil of society and the civil, what the government does. I don't think that the church should have a, should have a, a say in it. I believe in separation of church and state. The same way, as I've said before, I have never seen one minister get up and talk about the fact that it is legal to get an abortion. Not one. I've never seen one church get up and talk about um, it is legal to buy alcohol. I've never heard any church get up and and talk about it's legal to get a divorce outside of adultery in this country. So if you want to start talking about let's hold the government and civil to all the church principles, well, it's already out the bag. It's already out the bag. And I would think, and this is my personal opinion, I would think that the churches would be happy that people want to get married because the number one threat to marriage is divorce. But it would seem the churches think the number one threat to marriage it's more people wanting to get married. I think that speaks a lot for people who want to connect themselves to one person and abide by the tenets of marriage. But it would seem that the churches are hell-bent on saying that, no, that's absolutely wrong, but speak nothing of divorce. I would think you would be spending all your energy trying to get people not to divorce rather than preventing people from getting married. That's just my opinion. And that's why I struggle with the churches and their arguments. That's why I struggle with it. So that's my thoughts on the subject for today. I want people to consider the impact it has on persons that are in relationships, who are not able to, to make decisions for their partners because of their inability to marry and be um, connected through marriage or civil unions in this country.
So, folks, if you have any any other questions and any other um, topics you want to have dialogue around, please let me know. Um, you could follow me on YouTube where I post up these videos. You can follow me on Facebook where I try to save and post up these videos if you don't get to see them live because you know Periscope only, air, only has it up for 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And our goal in the LGBT community is to try to have as much dialogue as we can around this topic. So I hope you enjoyed the little mini tour you got in between the dialogue. And I hope you have an amazing day. I am out of here. Peace. BLG? I don't know what BLG is. What is BLG? Follow me on Facebook. Or follow me and I'll try to um, see if I can correspond with you. Peace. Why gay lesbian? What is that? Is that some type of website? Mm-hmm.